Okay, I've pressed it and I'm ready to pin and sew again. So you pin your four, four corners. You match your stitched seam with your front fabric to your back fabric. Push your seam allowance to opposite sides, keeping a cupped shape. Doesn't matter which side is cupped. Pin through all the layers. Pin through all the layers here, catching the other seam allowance on the underside here. See? like that and then we're going to do the other side and we're going to make sure that this is pushed to the right to match the bottom and that this one's pushed to the left to match this and also that the stitch seams are lined up pinning through all the layers all right check it looks good Ready to sew. Let's see, needle, push your threads back, stitch, back tack stitch. You can press your fabric away. The cupped excess fabric can be pressed away pushed away rather from the needle as you stitch so it doesn't get in the way. Backpack at the end. Same thing. On the other side. even along the entire stretch so you want to push the fabric down to the machine sometimes to hold it in place when you're manipulating it in other places okay so I'm taking out my pins I'm going to trim my threads to flip this inside out now now also now that I have the interfacing make sure you don't flip here between the interfacing and the fabric layer this was ironed into place before it was sewn but now you can see it's already separating which is normal for interfacing but make sure that you're flipping it at the point where the two fabric prints are coming through instead of the interfacing being shown That's just there for structure and for filtration. And then use your point turner to get your seam to be nice and crisp. Starting with the intersection of all of the fabrics here, the across shaped intersection and then moving along the seam then you go to the other side start at the center cross intersections of the seam seam intersection sorry get it nice and crisp to the other side again make sure you don't put this through the, between the interfacing and the print, but rather through 
I mean, the print that it was ironed onto originally, if that makes sense, because it's easy to do that, and you aren't trying to separate that point. You're trying to separate between the top layer and the bottom layer, basically. So I hope that makes sense. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to try to explain it better. Okay, so I've maintained my cup shape. I'm going to use my point turner again. I'm gonna fold this in half like so. And just press it like this. I'm gonna flip it around, press it like this. And then I'm gonna flip it this way cup it, use my point turner to crease it. I can also do this on a table, which might be easier. I actually prefer it on a table usually. Whatever's comfortable. And then I'm going to press this down with my hand. And then I can see that I've got nice crisp lines. And of course it'll be even better once I iron this. That's the next step. So. Okay. So now I'm going to use my fingers in here. Oops. Again, not the part where the interfacing is supposed to touch the fabric, but inside otherwise. And I'm just going to spread this out a little here and do it on this side too. And that is so I can get ready to install my elastic. And I'm just going to do like a hand press is what I call this. I'm just pressing it with my hand, which does help. It is effective. Okay, so now I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to measure out my elastic. And that varies based on the size of the pattern, of course. I'm going to do a double knot. Do the other side. This is behind the head elastic. That's why they're longer. Okay, there we go. Ready to install. So make sure you have, and you can refer back to your pattern piece. Which I left in the other room. Did I? Hold on a minute. This is a different pattern piece, but the shaping is similar. I can tell that the curve is this based on this curve that this is the top. This is just the larger size. Whereas the shaping here matches here as well. So anyway. So I know this is my top. I'm going to fold this inside and measure it so it's about half an inch. My stitch is going to be maintaining that three eighths of an inch. And I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, but again, you can measure. And yes, that is half an inch. Make sure I've got the right one for the top and the bottom here. Okay, so this is my top one. I'm just going to put this in here and then I'm going to put the bottom here 
I'm going to push it down far enough that the stitch will catch it so that the knot will be on the other side. And I'm going to finger press this in place. Grab my pin and pin as close to the elastic as I can. Okay, and do the other side. Just gonna fold, same thing, finger press. Take the other knot, put it down just past the fold. And again, you can measure if you want to confirm. I know this is a half an inch though, because I do this quite often. And I'm just really good at eyeballing. And I can check that measurement afterwards by folding this in half to make sure that my seams line up. So pinned it. I'm going to fold it in half. We're going to check it. Make sure this is exactly on the seam, which it is. And this will look a lot better once I press it, but that does look correct though. Okay, so then we're going to make sure the elastic is held away from where I'll be sewing. I lifted my needle, I'm pushing my threads back, making sure my presser foot is tightened here so it doesn't get loose on me as I sew. I'm going to stitch, back tack, stitch, all the way to the end, back tack, and cut the thread. Oh yeah, and then I forgot you can use the point turner seam ripper, but I prefer the point turner to push over that bump of elastic that's here because it does like to get stuck. So be careful when you do this. You don't want to sew over this. That would be bad. So then I just all the way to the end, push again. Trim your threads. restitch this because I got a little off of my line and I'm a little OCD about stuff like that so I like this line better the stitch lines a lot closer to my original line so I'm just going to remove this small section after I've stabilized it with the new stitch just because it's a little unsightly and I just don't like it and mistakes happen, so that's how you fix it, is you just stitch your new line. You can remove it first and then stitch your new line, but I just, since I'm only removing a small part of it, I just went ahead and stitched it and then to stabilize it, and now I'm just removing this ugly section of thread. All right, so now I'm gonna trim all of my threads. You're gonna have more of them when you do things like that. More to trim. <clears throat> Okay, let's see, but it looks a lot better already. And then I get 
it really close. Like if I didn't get close enough, I just fold it over my finger and then I can trim even closer like this. All right, looks good. Make sure when you do this, you don't cut any fabric. You're only cutting threads. Now there are trim scissors that you can use rather than, I mean, they're like thread cutting scissors that you can use rather than full fabric scissors. But that's personal preference too. Okay, so that looks good. Let's do the other side. I push down with a lot of force on my sewing machine to be able to keep the stitch line straight. Not like a lot of force, like excessive, but to stabilize it, if that makes sense. Like here, I press on my elastic within so it doesn't shift on me as I sew over it. And then I pull it out and then back with it as I'm back tacking. And that's to create a more straight stitch because it's hard to achieve, especially when you're sewing over something like elastic. Trim the thread. So now we have our finished face mask. And if you flip it, with that cupped shape, you can see the opposite side. Lovely. Now it's time to press it and fuse on the logo. And then we can stitch the logo in place, go through the sanitizing and packaging process from here and get this shipped out to our client. Thanks.